So um, this is a very general title. What I will talk about is the interaction of um, my gut microbiota with uh, obesity and uh, type 2 diabetes. So in the last uh, 10 years, um, it has been shown that uh, obesity is associated with um, an altered gut microbiota, and there are uh, compositional changes as well as functional changes, and lately it has been shown that also the gene content is associated with um, uh, obesity. And these, of course, are uh, association studies, and uh, some uh, evidence for a causal link have been provided lately um, using germ-free mice. And these studies have shown that the transmission of um, um, the adiposity phenotype uh, is, um, is linked uh, to the fecal microbiota, but it's dependent on the diet. So the diet plays a major role here. So what um, research has shown now is that uh, the same factors that affect the development of obesity, such as uh, genetics, lifestyle, diet, environment, they also shape the gut microbiota and are important not only for the development of obesity, but also um, obesity-related comorbidities like um, type 2 diabetes. So I will show you um, one the results from a published study um, and where we uh, analyzed the gut microbiota in uh, diabetes, in type 2 diabetes, in a cohort of uh, 17 uh, years old uh, women. And we saw that the gut microbiota was altered. Uh, there were uh, increased uh, Clostridium clostridiforme, Lactobacillus gasseri, and Streptococcus mutans in uh, type 2 diabetes uh, patients, and a decrease of Roseburia, Eubacterium allegiens, and Bacteroides intestinalis. We also uh, observed that some of the, these uh, species uh, were uh, related to important uh, biomarkers for metabolic disease. And uh, we used um, the functional, well, we also observed that uh, the function of these, uh, uh, the gut meta metagenome is um, altered in type 2 diabetes. And we used the compositional and um, um, functional changes to uh, train uh, a mathematical model uh, that was able to classify uh, type 2 diabetes uh, with uh, high accuracy. Uh, what we observed that um, um, the most discriminant uh, microbes were Roseburia and Lactobacillus gasseri, uh, but there were also Fecalibacterium prasnitsi species. And, um, so there was a clear uh, bacterial sig signature discriminating type 2 diabetes subjects. We applied then this model to uh, a group of uh, about uh, 45 uh, um, impaired glucose tolerance subjects. Uh, so it, this impaired glucose tolerance is often a pre-diabetic uh, state. And what we found is that um, subjects that were classified um, as um, the, the IGT subjects that were classified uh, by the model as uh, type 2 diabetics, they also had this lipidemia and uh, increased uh, serum C-peptide, uh, which is um, a sign of uh, um, um, abnormal uh, insulin secretion. So uh, what our model said is that uh, uh, IGT women and so prediabetes uh, could be identified based on the profile of the gut microbiota and uh, so could detect diabetes-like metabolism before type 2 diabetes uh, appeared. So um, a similar study had uh, been published few months before our study, and um, uh, what uh, we observed is that uh, in our court, the Swedish court and the Chinese court of the, this study, there were similar compositional and functional alterations, um, but the signatures of um, microbial signatures differed uh, for the classification of type 2 diabetic subjects. So basically, we um, trained a model on the Chinese cohort and use that model to classify um, the type 2 diabetic people in our uh, cohort. And we didn't observe uh, a good uh, prediction. And the other way around, we trained our a model. Um, so uh, basically, we, we had much lower scores uh, by crossing the, the population and uh, the model. So this means that. Um, the microbial signatures are different between um, ethnic groups, and we need to have uh, more um, multi-ethnic studies, and we are actually recruiting um, subjects in, um, 
and University of San Francisco, where we'll, we'll have Hispanic and uh, Caucasian and Chinese populations, as well as uh, in the Netherlands and uh, in Mexico for about um, six to 8,000 subjects. Um, but then, of course, these uh, studies are still associations, and, uh, but there, there, are some, there is some evidence in humans that the microbiota actually affects uh, glucose uh, metabolism, and this is a study from the Netherlands where the fecal uh, microbiota was transferred, as we heard this morning, and there was an improvement in um, uh, peripheral insulin sensitivity. And so uh, the Madipur, also it was shown by the, another study from the same group that um, modification of the gut microbiota by antibiotic treatment resulted in um, decreased um, insulin sensitivity uh, when uh, vancomycin was administered and there was uh, also a shift in uh, bile acid uh, profile. So there was uh, a decrease in secondary bile acids and an increase in primary bile acids and this correlated with uh, increase in FGF19 and FXR signaling um, in, in these subjects. So um, to better understand the interaction between the gut microbiota, obesity, and type 2 diabetes, uh, we uh, use uh, bariatric surgery as, um, as a model, and we have now samples from uh, subjects who underwent different, different bariatric surgical procedures. So we, um, I will present now um, unpublished results from two studies. So in the first study, we compared um, subjects who received um, gastric banding or um, roux and y gastric bypass. These two surgical procedures are very different uh, because um, uh, roux and y gastric bypass, as we heard it before, um, is important not only for weight loss um, but also for uh, remission of diabetes, while gastric banding has not uh, a metabolic benefit. Uh, and then in another study, I will uh, present data about uh, vertical sleeve gastrectomy. So in, in the first study, we specifically asked uh, what are the differences between um, the alteration of the gut microbiota in subjects receiving Y gastric bypass or ben uh, vertical banded gastroplasty, and uh, how stable uh, these uh, changes of the microbiota are. So we examined um, seven um, patients uh, that received REMY, uh, seven VBG, and we also had a group of seven um, women that were severely obese. And we examined the operated groups uh, about nine years after they received surgery. Um, it's important to mention here that, that uh, these, um, the operated um, uh, groups were matched for um, preoperative body, um, body mass and also uh, at the time of inclusion in the study. So they had um, similar weight loss and also similar body composition. So we received samples while these women were in, um, in a chamber for indirect calorimetry, and we um, obtained both uh, blood and stool samples. So we observed that the gut microbiota is uh, altered in the, in, after uh, surgery. Uh, in particular, there were clearer differences uh, for the Y altered gut microbiota uh, versus the obese microbiota uh, in this um, bigger plot here. So mostly uh, the altered uh, microbes belong to proteobacteria. Um, and um, we didn't find any significant difference for the VBG uh, microbiota against the obese microbiota, and we didn't find any clear uh, statistical difference between the Rue and Y and the VBG. So we also observed um, function, difference, difference in the functional capacity of the gut uh, microbiota, uh, but there were more genes upregulated, uh, um, enriched in the, the Rue and Y in comparison to the obese than in the VBG in comparison to the obese. And there were only 17 genes that differed between the VBG and the Rue and Y. They were all enriched in the VBG and they mainly uh, were linked to benzoate and aminobenzoate metabolism. So uh, we did a pathway analysis and we found these pathways uh, um, that were differentially represented in the Rue and Y versus obese or VBG versus obese. Basically, 
We found a phosphotransferase system for the uptake of uh, sugars and the fluorobenzoate specifically enriched in RUMY and uh, glutathione metabolism, glyoxylate and the carboxylate metabolism, ABC transporters, phenylalanine metabolism. And uh, these ABC transporters were mainly for amino acids, specifically enriched in the VBG versus obese. But there were uh, some pathways that were commonly uh, common to both bariatric surgery procedures, and they included um, two component systems, nitrogen metabolism and fatty acid metabolism. Uh, I took a um, closer look at the two component systems because they are quite diverse in bacteria. And there are many, and what I could find is that uh, the two component systems enriched in both RU and Y and VBG compared to obese subjects included defense against antimicrobial peptides, outer membrane stress, and trimethylamine oxidase. So there was both uh, transport and um, uh, metabolic enzymes, genes for transport and metabolic enzymes in this group. Uh, and it was a bit more increased in the RUMY, but overall in both uh, surgery groups. But then in RUMY gastric bypass, there were um, the enriched two component systems were responding to nitrogen availability, phosphoglycerate, and short chain fatty acids, while uh, the VBG. Uh, there were um, two component systems for salt stress response and twitching motility. And overall, it could be um, tempting to, to speculate that uh, the VBG environment, gut environment, could pose a more general and nutritional stress to the microbes, as shown by the presence of uh, enriched uh, genes for glutathione metabolism and also increased metabolism or amino acids and uh, the glyoxylate pathway. While here, microbes were mo mostly using sugars and um, short chain fatty acids and phosphoglycerate for um, uh, energy. Um, so we also observed that um, another difference between um, RUMY, gut microbiota, and VBG related to the um, gene richness. So all the subjects um, in the RUMY group were above the threshold that has been uh, recently established as a high gene count, uh, while the VBG were about um, that threshold, around exactly at the threshold. But we didn't find any bimodal distribution in our study, and of course this is only seven subjects per group. Uh, but this could also um, be, link, yeah, be um, important for the, um, the gut environment that could be uh, more beneficial in the RUMY gastric bypass than in the VBG. So uh, to know the consequences of this um, uh, alteration in the gut microbiota and see whether uh, there was a phenotype driven by these microbes, we uh, used the Gemfree model and uh, we used um, the Swiss Webster um, um, strain and female mice to match the source of uh, the human microbiota. So we transplanted the human microbiota and did um, measurement of body composition one day and 14 days after um, transplantation, and then we measured oxygen consumption and metabolism in the somatic system. So what we observed is that um, the mice that received the RUMY uh, flora had um, a 43% decrease in fat accumulation compares, compared to mice uh, that obtained uh, the obese flora, while the VBG um, fat accumulation was intermediate, but was still 26% less than uh, in the uh, obese um, transplanted mice. And although there was no difference in the oxygen consumption between the groups, there was a difference in the respiratory quotient, that is um, a ratio between um, the CO2 that is produced over the oxygen that is consumed. And this was significant during the night, so the active phase, between uh, mice transplanted with obese flora and mice transplanted with um, RUMY. And, uh, and also in the basal uh, state, basal metabolism, was uh, the respiratory quotient was still uh, decreased for the RUMY flora compared to the VBG flora. So these um, lower va uh, values for the RQ ratio indicate uh, increased fat utilization for um, uh, mice that received the RUMY microbiota. So um, 
for um, like going deeper into the link, the causal link between gut microbiota and uh, the outcomes of bariatric surgery, we uh, used, um, we, we did um, sleeve gastrectomy surgery in uh, germ-free mice. What we observed is that there was um, um, a big decrease in body weight, so there was um, marked weight loss in the, um, in the conventional mice, but germ-free mice, uh, even though they lost weight, they took up uh, a weight, a regained weight, a bit faster than the conventional mice, and they achieved le less uh, weight loss in comparison to conventional mice. And also, glucose metabolism was affected by the procedure only in the conventional mice, but not in the germ-free. And we could uh, transfer this phenotype with the um, transplantation of flora from the, um, the sham-operated mice and the VSG mice. Um, uh, what we observed is that on the bile acid profile, that there was a major modulation of the bile acid profile only in the conventional mice. And um, the conventional mice receiving sleeve gastrectomy uh, had um, a bile acid profile that was quite kind of similar to the germ-free mice with the tauro beta muricolic acid and um, taurocolic acid being the two dominant bile acid species in the, in the bile acid, in the circulating bile acids in, in this system. So what we actually think now, um, we also observed um, a shutdown in, in these mice uh, uh, of uh, hepatic um, gluconeogenesis. And um, so we, what we think is that um, FXR and FGF15 are important uh, for the, F, the, the effect of VSG. And indeed, we have uh, recently published, together with Randy Seelis, that VS, FXR is important for the outcome of uh, sleeve uh, gastrectomy. And it's also related to uh, shifts in the microbiota. Um, so, uh, in summary, what uh, we have seen is that microbiota is altered in two type, type 2 diabetes and that molecular signatures can be important for uh, identifying people at, at risk of uh, T2D. And we also have some uh, um, evidence for causal link between the gut microbiota and the outcomes of bariatric surgery, for example, in reduced fat gain and improved uh, glucose control. And um, microbiota and FXR together might be required for the beneficial effects of bariatric surgery, at least in mice. So um, I would like to um, thank all the present and past members of the Beckett Lab. Uh, our collaborators at the University of Gothenburg, uh, the bioinformaticians at Chalmers Institute in Gothenburg, and uh, Randy Seely and the surgeon Jose Berger at the University of Cincinnati. And thank you for listening.